Hi, this is Kendra from Pencil and Pigment. And today I wanted to talk a little bit about a couple of pen colored pencil blenders in pencil form. Now, there are actually a ton of these on the market. I have the Prismacolor Premier. It's PC1077. And then I also have the uh, Karen Dosh Full Blender Bright. That's gonna be kind of hard to see. It's printed into the actual pencil. There's no wood around this one. So I will show you a demo of these two, but I thought we would just have like a little, a little chat. So there are tons of different types of colored pencil blenders. And I would say the number one product to buy after you buy a set or some colored pencils to try if you really like this medium would be to buy a blender. That would be the first and foremost thing you should probably pick up. But they come in many formats. So as far as pencil format for bl blenders, um, obviously Prismacolor makes these, they make a two pack. Um, Lyra Rembrandt Splendor makes a two pack. Um, you can use the Derwent Blender. They also have a Derwent burnish pencil. Sometimes those come in a pack together. Um, Karen Dosh also makes a luminescence blender that is encased in wood as well. Um, you can get these in liquid form. So mineral spirits, which is a liquid, and you can apply these using either a q-tip, cotton bud, cotton swab, whatever your country refers to them as and rub that on the surface or use some form of like brush applicator, a sponge applicator to thin out your colored pencil and use those. And Gamblin Gamasol Mineral Spirits Zest It, which is sold at Jackson's. I believe this is just a UK product. Um, is also a liquid pencil blend solvent Let's see, Blick has their own colored pencil blender. Um, gosh, there's so many different kinds. You can use paper stumps to blend colored pencils, and those work, I would say, not quite as well, and they take a little bit longer. Like, you have to be pretty dedicated to blending to use a paper stump. But that is also a possibility. Just like alcohol markers make blender pens or Pan Pastel has their own little blender pot, there's just tons and tons and tons of stuff for colored pencils. And on YouTube, there's tons of people reviewing different blender products and comparing and contrasting those. So I will link some of those if you want to see how some of the other ones are behaving. Because when you look at a colored pencil, and I borrowed some from my daughter, she has the um, right here, the Prismacolor Premier. And I would say if you are just starting out or you want to do this for craft, hobby, or for kids, the Prismacolor are wonderful. They're a wonderful, wonderful colored pencil. I, I know artists that use these as well. Um, colored pencils are made of the same ingredients in different proportions. So all colored pencils are made with a pigment, water, bonding agents, wax, and oil. Now, it's the wax and oil percentages that tell you whether something is a little higher quality or blends a little different or performs a little different. So here I have Polychromos, and here I have the Luminescence Caran d'Ache. And I would say, without a doubt, the most wax-based colored pencil is the Caran d'Ache Luminescence and probably the most oil-based colored pencil would be the Polychromos, the Faber-Castell Polychromos. And those perform differently with the different blending agents. Now there's a powder blending agent as well, and that is made by brush and pencil, and the powder blender is pretty popular, and you can also put that on with, you know, a cotton bud Q-tip or with a sponge applicator or a little brush. And sometimes I've seen it done sandwiched where they do the powder 
add the color pencil and then do another layer of powder on top and it sort of blends it all out and in some ways I've seen it done where they just put down layers of colored pencil. It works really really great with a polychromos with oil based colored pencils and then you put the powder on top and then you blend and blend and blend. So some of this also has to do with paper preference. So if you prefer illustrating and drawing colored pencils on really smooth paper like hot press or Bristol board paper then all of this is going to behave differently and you're going to have probably a different colored pencil preference. If you gesso your hot press paper or use sanded paper, and these papers are much more rough and have a tooth texture to them, you get a different style of creation because you're adding actually more layers. And I know a lot of colored pencil professional artists pre prefer the sanded paper just because it's like half the work and twice the pigmentation. I mean, it really, because the paper is sanded, you do go through your pencil, like you do wear down your pencil a lot faster, but you get more layers and you get more pigment and it takes less time. So for sanded paper, the polychromos, the powder blender, that's a great combination. These are just, there's so many different products out there and I can't say like which one's better, which one's not. Sometimes I don't even burnish my colored pencil illustrations. And burnishing just means, you know, you polish by rubbing. So basically at the end of an illustration, are you in fact going over it with a blender or a lighter colored pencil so that it looks like a solid piece of color and you can't see any of the paper through it? And I will show you an example of that. I kind of have some of my stuff ready. And here's the polychromos. Here's a lighter yellow and a pale gray, warm gray too. And this one is called Cream 102. So these are two really, really color light polychromos pencils. And if I take, here's my juniper green. And I use a lot of juniper green and a lot of stuff because I do a lot of nature based illustrations and insects and mushrooms and stuff. You can still see bits of the paper through the illustration. You can still see the white. Now maybe that's what you want. Maybe you're drawing something with a texture that the texture has white dots on it. Maybe there's spores or, you know, it's fur or it's any kind of interesting texture. But if you want that to look smoother, you can burnish and I'll, they look different. So if I burnish it with a warm yellow to get a solid color, it tends to look like this. Now I am using Strathmore's drawing paper 400. This is definitely a choice since Strathmore makes a specific colored pencil paper. Here is the warm gray. But once you burnish on top, it looks more like a solid color. So here, I will do this again. Over here. And I will show you the two blenders I have. And this is probably gonna come down to preference. So I personally prefer the Caran d'Ache one. It's very waxy. It's super, super, super waxy. Um, it's very smooth. It's the entire thing. There's, it's not surrounded by wood. So as a result, when sharpening, I would say, if you want a fine tip, don't sharpen from the top down because you lose so much pencil when you sharpen this way. Here, look, I'll show you it being sharpened. You lose huge chunks of the pencil when you sharpen it. I would say probably pocket knife this one and sharpen from the down up to use the least amount of pencil possible so you always have a tip. But here's the top with this blender. And this is a colorless blender. It's supposed to be a little brighter and you can see there's little bits of wax because I'm pressing down super, super hard. <clears throat> and that's kind of how I create. I just press down really hard. Here's the Prismacolor blender. This one's much more stiff. Can you hear that? Now, can you see a difference? Um, 
it's very negligible. It's so small. And this doesn't feel, the tip doesn't feel quite as waxy as the tip of this one does. This one feels very waxy. Like you could almost use this as a crayon resist for creations and stuff. So if I go to add another layer on top, and what is this? This is deep scarlet red. You can add another layer on top, but it sort of, it goes across differently. It feels a little different. And you do feel a bit of a difference because there is more wax in the luminescence one, but technically you could keep going. There's no right or wrong way to color pencil. I would say there's maybe more effective preferences, but even that, I mean, how many ways are there to bake a cake? How many ways are there to draw a creation? And you could just keep burnishing over the top. I would say burnishing for last, just because it's such a finalized thing. But these two are so similar that this will just probably come down to preference. I hope this helped. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will talk to you all tomorrow. Bye.